Intercession to Cavalry is one of the most amazing video games I've ever played. It's just incredible. I am in love with this game. I cannot say enough good things about it. It's unlike any game I've played before, and I adore it. I mean, I say it's unlike any other game I've played before. Mechanically, it is. It's a point-and-click adventure game at its heart, so on that level, I have literally played games like it before. But in terms of presentation, in terms of style, in terms of humour, the procession to cavalry has had me in awe. The most immediately striking thing about this game is its visual style, the visual presentation, the art. And for those who still consider it a debate, we can indeed say that this game is literally art. Since the visual assets are made out of real life Renaissance paintings. The backdrops pull from dozens of classic landscapes. The character models are similarly pulled from paintings and portraits and subsequently animated. Many of the people and places featured in this game will be instantly familiar to you if you are an aficionado of classical art. Or you can just pretend that they're familiar to you so that, you know, you look a bit cultured. The Procession to Cavalry really enjoys playing around with this conceit, reinterpreting the subjects of these paintings to fit its narrative or to poke fun. Much of the humour is derived from placing these subjects in ridiculous or anachronistic situations. The word irreverent is chucked around willy-nilly these days, but for this game it really is an apt descriptor. As far as humour goes, this game has it in spades, and it's all just a lot delightfully absurd. Just silly as hell. So here's the premise. You are a brave warrior who just loves killing people. You are so into murder that when the war is won, you find yourself crushingly disappointed. You ask if you can keep murdering, those in charge say no, so you talk to your newly crowned king, Immortal John, and you find out that the leader of the opposing army, Heavenly Peter, escaped with his life. Therefore, you have an excuse to go out and do one last murder. From there, the game has a fairly straightforward, simple point-and-click structure. You find out the tasks you need to progress and explore the environment looking for the items you need to do it. One simple, straightforward early example of a puzzle is you need to get on a boat, the boatsman lacks his oars, there is someone else who's using oars as crutches, but he won't give them to you unless his peers approve of you. They're all lined up outside a hospital with various ailments that you have to cure by giving them the items they need. For example, one of them's desperate to see the doctor because his hair is too long. If you find a pair of scissors, you can give them to him. Approval met. I mean, if you've played anything like Monkey Island, you know the kind of shit you're dealing with with here. The puzzles such as they are are very straightforward. Rarely if ever will you be left guessing as to what you need, as the situations and their solutions follow a very logical track. Sometimes I've needed to put a little bit of thought into where to go and who to talk to, but I've never truly been stuck. The most stumped I've been so far is a puzzle that involves memorising something, and as someone with a memory disorder, I basically had to rely on my husband reading stuff out. To be honest, I've been getting a little less patient with memory puzzles overall, especially after so many of them making me think I was not all that bright when, no, I literally have an issue in my head brain. So I might be calling more of that out. Fuck the curse of the lost in The Binding of Isaac is basically what I'm saying. On the subject of accessibility, Procession to Cavalry would really benefit from some sort of dyslexic font option because the default font in this game is horrible. It sadly chooses form far and above function, which is a puzzling choice considering the form in this case is hideous. They've gone for a fancy calligraphic font option so that it looks a bit renaissance -y. But even as someone who considers themselves a pretty darn good sight reader, I was having trouble passing some of this text. And on top of that, it's not even a very good font choice. Aesthetically, it's really cheap looking when plastered over the paintings. A fact that the game itself even recognises in one of its meta moments, it points out that the font's horrid. In the options menu, which has a setting that you can toggle so that a monk blows raspberries at you when you close said menu, you can change the font to make it a bit bigger, but it's really not good enough. If you can wade through the sometimes difficult text, however, it really is worth it. I mean, it's just worth getting into this game. 
As someone who struggles to concentrate on their reading in general these days because of their wildly, increasingly out of control attention deficit, I found myself enraptured and engrossed by this game. I have read all of the text because it's all really good. It's so sharply written. It's so damn funny. The characters are memorable. The situation's laughable. This is a delightfully, delightfully ridiculous ridiculous game and I'm here for it. Due to the animation style it's hard not to bring up Monty Python in reference to this game but then it's hard to bring up Monty Python and not mention the fact that Terry Gilliam and John Cleese are transphobic wankers so we'll leave it at that. Oh, I guess if I have one other criticism of the game it's that when the camera moves it brings the pointer cursor with it which might not be such an issue on computer where the mouse can just easily move the cursor around but I've been playing it on the Xbox Series X via Game Pass and so when the camera character moves and shifts the cursor at the same time and moves off of the things I was clicking on and interacting with, it creates the need for a little bit of course correction, which is not a huge issue, but I would have preferred the cursor to remain where I left it. You know, I'm just saying some of us would vote remain. The game originally came out in the year 2020, which was, by my reckoning, about 50 years ago now, and I wish I'd have seen it at the time. I did not know until I was browsing Game Pass and saw just this visually striking offering on the table. Those of you who were aware of it before now may be wondering why I'm doing a video on it so late to the party, but fuck it, I want to talk about this game. It's like really good. In terms of smaller scale titles that have come out to my great surprise and become one of my favourite games, this is up there with the sexy brutale. So yeah, that's the procession to cavalry. I am completely and thoroughly delighted by it. And since it's on Game Pass, if you've got access to that, I cannot recommend dipping into it enough. You know me, I don't like to recommend purchases, but I'd have gladly spent money on this, and the fact that one doesn't have to if they've got Game Pass, yeah, no brainer. Get it, have a look at it, have a laugh, unless it's not to your liking humor-wise, in which case don't. You're an adult, aren't you? You should be if you're on this channel. Don't tell YouTube if you're not, right? Make your own decisions. Make your own decisions on what to buy. What do you want me to wipe your ass for you as well? Do you? I mean, I'm just saying if you're into it, we could do that. Maybe. No, no. But no. But no.